So today's project is to try and clean up this head. Um, I didn't want to take the head off, but if you saw my previous video with the state of the um, cylinder number one with all the rust in it, then obviously if you're going to get rust in cylinder one, then you're also going to get rust in the head as well, obviously where the valves sit. So I didn't want to put it all back together again and then find out it was rusted shut. So I did a test on some of the valves, just pressing them on the top, and indeed one of the valves on cylinder one was stuck. So I thought, you know what, let's just take it apart and give it a good clean. So now I didn't have the sense of mind to actually film it beforehand, when you do things on your own of course sometimes you forget you just get on with it so I have actually cleaned this head out um, as you can probably tell it's not perfect but it's pretty good and I'm going to get inside these um, inside the valve seats here with a bit of sandpaper later very fine sandpaper like 1500 grit and just get some of the um, just get a little bit more out of those and then I'm going to get um, some valve lapping compound and then we'll actually lap those valves back in properly. Now I haven't actually cleaned the valves yet, so if I show you a couple of the valves, you'll see what I mean. They are rusted and hanging. Faces of them aren't too bad, but you know, when you look in the head and you see that, and my conscience won't let me leave it alone. So I'm gonna clean these valves up. And then we'll head off and get some um, lapping compound and the little sucker twizzler thing and we'll lap those valves back in. And hopefully get this lot back together. Now I don't have a valve removal tool and I'm loath to pay £50 to get one. So I made my own tool which was essentially taking an old three quarter inch socket, grinding it in half and then using that in conjunction with a G-clamp to get on top of those valve seats, press them down so the collets will come out. And it works. I actually found that if you just literally put it on top of the valve and give it a quick tap with a rubber mallet, it causes the collets just to jump out. So that's pretty good. Obviously putting them back in, I'm going to have to compress them, getting them out, was actually reasonably straightforward. So that's all good. So let's give these valves a good clean and then hopefully later on I can get this head back together and start putting things like the carbs and the inlet manifold back on it again and actually leave this engine alone. That would be great. So we've got a nice soft wire brush and then also got some 500 grit wet and dry. So. Get our wet and dry wet. <clears throat> we'll see. Make sure the valves are numbered and in order. Don't want to be. Uh, don't want to be redoing them all from scratch. And first of all, I always just like to use water, just plain water, and just see how clean we can get them before we start putting anything else on it. Because a lot of the time, water is actually all you need. Just going to give the heads a quick scrub on them, but again, I'm not too worried about these because obviously the part of the valve that actually seals is just the rim, just that little edge. That's the bit that makes the seal. So we're going to give them a very light scrub. Just to remove any big stuff. This one is actually quite clean. But I can feel when I twist it between my fingers, I can feel the abrasiveness. Probably can't hear that over the traffic. <laughs> So we'll get them when they're wet and dry. Okay, so with the valves all cleaned up, now we'll have to go in here and give these a bit of a clean as well. As you can see, there's a little bit of corrosion inside some of them. Some of them aren't too bad, and some of them just got a little bit of corrosion in them. 
So I'm not going to touch. <clears throat> Let me just get something small and pointy. I don't have anything small and pointy. So I'm not going to touch the um, the very inner edge, if you can see it there, where the valve actually seals. I'm going on the inside of that just to get that crap off. I won't touch that edge until I actually get the lapping compound and then I'll do that properly. So I'm just cleaning the inside edge. <clears throat> so let's give them a good scrub out. Okay, so we've got our little um, valve lapping tool, which is basically a wooden stick with two suckers on it, a small sucker at one end and a large sucker on the other. And you also get two tubs of grinding paste. So the one in this hand is a coarse grinding paste and this one's a fine grinding paste. So basically if the valve is a bit manky, which all of them are, you start with the coarse and then you switch down to the fine. So we're going to start with the coarse on this one. So what we will do is, let's get this valve out. So we'll get a good positive grip on it with the sucker. If I can get it in the middle, pull that valve out, and then we're going to put a tiny bit of this grinding paste on the underside of that valve where it seats. And reinsert said valve, and then we're going to twizzle it. So we're going to twizzle it, twizzle and lift, twizzle and lift, and the noise is going to tell you, like sanding something. You know, the noise tells you how fine it is. If it sounds rough as if it sounds like a hacksaw, you know, it's pretty rough. Um, now you're probably not going to hear me over the noise of the traffic because we do live on a main road and it is noisy, but. can hear that it sounds like a hacksaw. So let's start twizzling. And if you can hear that the sound has already changed. It's gone much quieter now. And then when you get to a position where the pitch doesn't change, it means you've obviously gone as far as as you can do with that one. Okay, so take that one out. And we'll clean off the coarse paste. Give all of this a proper flush out before reassembly, anyway, and then we will switch to the fine paste. process.
you know, work this one a little bit more than the coarse because as you get finer in the grains, like with the sandpaper for example, you have to work at it a little bit harder because obviously you, with each pull you're not cutting as much. And when you're satisfied with the pitch again isn't changing, take it off. Give the underside of that valve a really good clean off, just to get the worst of it off with a bit of kitchen roll. Same in there. Now we'll go in there with a bit of WD-40 in a cloth and hopefully get it all out. And of course that's only one done, we've got another seven to do. So as always I won't subject you to watching me do another seven. Right, 10 minutes later, and there we go. All valves lapped and done. And we're just giving them a squirt of WD, just to grab any of the loose grinding paste that I may have missed. I've cleaned them twice, uh, once with a bit of kitchen roll and again with a fine cloth. Um, but again, anything I have missed, microscopic parts, WD will drag it down and then we can just mop it out with a bit of a cloth. Bit of WD in there. Isn't going to hurt now, so... It's going to be a couple of months where I get this engine running, so... Having a bit of WD in and around your valves, as far as I'm concerned, is no bad thing. There we go. Grab hold of one of your valves, give it a twizzle. Makes almost no noise. Perfect. Glassy smooth. Okay, so now I'm going to try and get one of these back together again. So, first things first, put the guide on. Make sure there's no grit or anything on our springs, make sure they're nicely oiled. Spring one, spring two, pair of collets, and our cap. So then what we need to try and do is Get you in there. So I have a pair of little collets. They grip around the top of the valve stem, but obviously I need to get the spring down enough to get them in. This is why you're meant to use a spring compressor. But we're going to try it with our homemade spring compressor. So I've got a piece of cloth wadded up underneath it. To stop the valve being pushed down. Whilst I apply pressure using my trusty half a socket, 
on the top of this at the same time with my third arm try and get those collets in and there we go, that's the first one done both sides back in good to go now we'll repeat time seven that was a little bit of a faff As always, if you can get the proper tool to do it, get the proper tool. It's going to make your life so much easier. Don't be a skin flint like me. Ta -da. All eight valves, springs and collets back in the right place. So my imperfect tool does actually work. There's a, there's a lot of technique to it, but it does work. I found to get them out, the simplest thing to do is take your half socket, hold it over the top, and give it about two taps with a rubber mallet, and it jars it just enough to push those collets out. So a couple of taps with the mallet to get them out, easy. First of all, I was trying to fish them out with a pair of pliers whilst keeping tension on the clamp and all the rest of it, and it was just a pain in the ass, it wasn't really working. It took me about half an hour to do the first two, and then it took me five minutes to do the second six once I'd worked out that a couple of taps with a mallet does the same job. So that's easy. And then getting them back in, pretty straightforward. Get one half in first of all, get your compressor on, push it down, get the other half lined up so it's just about to go in, get some tension on it, and then when you drop it low enough, just keep sort of shaking it minutely, and that second half drops in, and then release, and you're good. So yeah, <clears throat> so all valves back in their rightful home, job done, right, next job, refit that head. Okay, nuts back on, bit of copper slip on the threads, tighten down finger tight, and then we just need to torque them up in the correct order. So the order is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So basically you're starting from the middle, going outwards, and you're doing diagonals, which makes sense. Obviously it's crushing the gasket. So you don't want to crush it from the outside and bring it in, you want to crush it from the middle and splay it out, so that makes perfect sense. So we'll go around, tighten them up once, tighten them up again, then do a third to final um, tighten to the torque sets. And there we go, all torqued up, nice and tight. So, next job, refit the push rods, then the rocker assembly that goes on top, and then refit the cover. And then we're pretty much there. Okay, let's get it done. Right, so I'm guessing what we do is get this back on, and then as it goes down, line up our push rods. into their cups Ok, 
Okay, so now we will stick a bar on the bottom end pulley just to save my oily hands. And hopefully, this should all move nice and freely. And all the valves should move, so I'll watch them one at a time. So, watch this one first. This one, that one's moving, this one, that one's moving, this one, that one's moving, this one, oops, the end of the talk wrench gun, this one, yeah, this one, yeah, and this one. Yes. Okay. So everything's going round and round. Good. So nothing's binding, nothing's crunching, nothing's banging, nothing's getting stuck. So, from my limited automotive knowledge, that means we're on the right track. So even if there was something wrong somewhere else and I was to start this engine up and get it spinning, nothing catastrophic is going to happen, not with the timing. The valves are moving away from the pistons, nothing's banging, nothing's touching, so the engine will spin freely. So I'm happy with that. Right, rock cover back on, let's get this bad boy sealed up, and then cool this one down. It doesn't seem to work. Alright, so there we are. So that's the back end of the frame all painted up now. I'm just going to give the brake lines a clean just to make them look nicer. I've got a wheel to repaint today on that side. Brakes are all done on that side, that's all working. Chassis is now all painted up through underneath my toolkit <coughs> and all the way up to the front outriggers. So next job will be getting the front end off and obviously doing what we've done already. Check the components, especially the bushes, uh, if there's a ball joint on that um, anti-roll bar arm or the track rod ends and obviously check the brakes, etc. Clean up those springs if we can. Get that done, but that is that block now looking much better. So happy with that. So I'm going to take the water pump down to the workshop today and give that a clean out. And then we can refit the water pump, uh, alternator, whatever else goes on there. I think that's about it, isn't it? These cars, water pump, alternator and get a new fan belt on there, um, reconnect my distributor up, put my plug, in fact I'm going to put the spark plugs back in now, so obviously we don't want anything getting into those cylinders, um, yeah, reassemble the engine fully, get both of those fronts done, and then I can tackle the very front of the car here, so again, same as before, take it apart, strip it down, scrub, clean, check for rust, paint, see if I can get these front lights off. The front lights are really annoying. They've got these two little screws in them, so you think, oh great, I'll just unscrew them and the light will come off. No. Now you unscrew that, the bezel and the lens comes out, but the actual light fitting appears to be riveted into here. So, do I want to drill those rivets out? I can drill them out and re-rivet it, that's not a problem, because I do want to check the wiring is okay on them. They've got 
the wiring attached to them, which is fine, but I don't know how good that wiring is at the back of the light. And also there's one horn. I've got another horn down at the workshop. Now I have tested the horn by putting 12 volts across them using a laptop power supply, but obviously that's only going to be about one amp, and it didn't work. So it means the horn is either borked or it just needs more power across it. So I'll probably just stick a car battery across it and make sure they work. Soon both the horns work, obviously they need tying up as well. And then yeah, start um once all that's done, it will be lovely. And then I can start on body, interior and paint. And I'll be a happy boy. But yeah, I think it's looking I think it's looking alright. On the whole. And then get my lovely stainless steel exhaust on as well and start polishing up some of the chrome and the seats, etc. etc. Anyway, we'll leave it there. Thank you.